The One Book, One Nebraska Selection is a dynamic program which cultivates a culture of reading and discussion in our state by bringing our diverse state together around one great book by a Nebraska author. Making the announcement for the 2021 One Book, One Nebraska title is Rebecca Faber. I'm Becky Faber, a member of the Nebraska Center for the Book Board. Our world has changed drastically since the announcement was made one year ago of the 2021 Book One Nebraska. We could not have foreseen the pandemic that was ahead, a virus that has so strongly redefined our lives. Despite the changes around us, the process for the One Book, One Nebraska was not impacted. The public made nominations prior to June 15th. Nominated books must meet criteria. Written by a Nebraska author or have a Nebraska theme or setting. They should be in print and readily available as well as lend themselves to group discussion. A committee of six reviewed the nominations, a long process that involves a great deal of reading and critical thinking. I would like to thank Lori Yoakum, Christine Walsh, Katie Bean, Diane Downer, and Rod Wagner for their time and expertise with this process. Four finalists were chosen. The Nature of Home, a lexicon of essays by Lisa Knopp, Black Print with a White Carnation, Mildred Brown and the Omaha Star Newspaper, 1938 to 1989 by Amy Force, The Lauren Isley Reader, a collection of Isley's essays edited by the Lauren Isley Society, Prairie Forge, the extraordinary story of the Nebraska scrap metal drive of World War II by James Kimball. At some point during our current pandemic, the phrase, we are all in this together, appeared. The sentiment was supposed to be one of unity. It reminds me of other times when citizens have joined together to move forward in stressful situations. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941, President Roosevelt called for an arms buildup to support our troops. However, a shortage of steel impacted arms production. America needed a plan, and the first step to make a viable one came from Henry Dorley, publisher of the Omaha World Herald. His plan for a Nebraska scrap metal drive in 1942 was so successful that it was used as a model for a national scrap drive. I am pleased to announce the 2021 One Book, One Nebraska is Prairie Forge, the extraordinary story of the Nebraska scrap metal drive of World War II by James Kimball. Nebraskans showed the entire nation how their we're all in this together attitude and actions helped to win World War II. I think that you will enjoy reading about how Nebraskans across this entire state in large communities and small ones led the way during a national crisis. I hope that you will enjoy this video by James Kimball the author of Prairie Forge, the extraordinary story of the Nebraska scrap metal drive of World War II, which has been selected as the 2021 One Book, One Nebraska. Thank you for that introduction, Dr. Faber. I have a small window of time for these remarks, so I'll be brief. Three quick thoughts come to mind. Surprise, gratitude, and challenge. First is surprise. 
A few weeks ago, I received a surprising email from Becky Baker, who's the director of the Seward Memorial Library, where I've given a number of talks over the years. So it's one of the best libraries in Nebraska. She offered her congratulations. Prairie Forge was a finalist for the One Book, One Nebraska selection. And it was a surprise. I hadn't realized that the book was under consideration. And so, of course, I immediately checked out the other finalists, and I came away with one conclusion. If the committee selected The Nature of Home, Black Print with a White Carnation, or The Lauren Isley Reader, the state would have an amazing read in store for 2021. That Prairie Forge has ended up as the selection was the final surprise, and I can only hope that its message will resonate with readers, that it will serve to bolster Nebraskans' pride in their rich history, and that it will stimulate public interest in books and the written word. The second thought is, of course, gratitude. I'm grateful to the Nebraska Center for the Book for this recognition, but while I accept the recognition, I have to add that I can't accept it for myself. It's been the privilege of my life to be able to share this story, but my role has merely been that of the storyteller who found an amazing story about my beloved home state. Neither can I accept this recognition on behalf of the dozens of people mentioned in the book's acknowledgments, including my parents, to whom it's dedicated. They can't even accept it on behalf of the University of Nebraska Press, whose dauntless team supported and improved this project at every step along the way. Instead, my gratitude for this selection is focused on the scrappers themselves. Prairie Forge is their story. And since they are in many cases our own parents and grandparents and great-grandparents, it is in a way our own story as well. The Scrappers' valiant work in the summer of 1942 changed the course of history. The prospect that in 2021, Nebraskans will still be talking about the Scrappers' remarkable project some 75 years later fills me with pride. And so I accept this selection on behalf of those scrappers whose story deserves to be remembered. The final thought is challenge. With the encouragement of the One Book, One Nebraska program, countless Nebraskans will be reading about the scrappers and their great treasure hunt in the next year. As you read it in book clubs, in class groups, in families, or as individuals, please allow me to challenge you to go beyond the book. Although we've lost far too many of them in recent years, there remain in Nebraska countless surviving scrappers. Seek them out. Ask them about their role in the scrap drive of 1942. Preserve their memories for the local historical society or the county historical society. In other words, let Prairie Forge serve as an invitation to not just celebrate the contributions of the greatest generation, but to preserve it. Our history as Nebraskans is precious, and I hope that Prairie Forge, under the leadership of the One Book, One Nebraska program, will play its part in bringing that history to life. Hi, I'm Christine Walsh. I am the current president of the Nebraska Center for the Book. I want to thank all of you for joining us for this wonderful week-long celebration of Nebraska Book Awards. Though we were unable to join each other in person, we were able to celebrate the talents of authors, illustrators, photographers, editors, publishers, and all those who continue the rich literary traditions of Nebraska. Thank you to the Nebraska Library Commission, especially Rod Wagner and Tessa Terry, and the Nebraska Center for the Book for sponsoring the celebration of Nebraska books. Additional thank yous go to the Humanities Nebraska, History Nebraska, and of course our wonderful Master of Ceremonies, Nebraska State Poet Matt Mason. My apologies to anyone I have overlooked. Most of all, thank you for joining us virtually for the 2020 celebration. Remember to watch the announcements about One Book, One Nebraska programs and more from the Nebraska Center for the Book and the Nebraska Library Commission on their websites and on social media. Thank you, and remember, happiness is a good book, so I hope you find some more good books soon. <music>